Wondering how to land a job in venture capital coming from consulting? Consulting oftentimes feels like a dream job, right? especially when you're coming right out of undergrad or B-school. But over time, the travel, the working for big corporations that don't really care what you have to say, it kind of becomes draining. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use your consulting experience as a platform to land your dream job in venture capital. Stay to the end, and I'll show you the one thing that you should consider before making the switch. Okay, so first of all, you should feel really confident leveraging your background as a management consultant, especially if you're coming from like a top five or top 10 program or company and transitioning into venture capital. Management consultants make some of the best venture capitalists. You look at people like Jeremy Liu at Lightspeed, and he was an early investor in a firm, Snapchat, The Honest Company, bunch of fantastic investments. And largely I think because he was able to leverage his time at McKinsey and his time working at some startups and more strategy roles to be able to identify different trends and businesses and market opportunities, as well as like business strategies that really work and have the potential to become really big businesses. If you think about it at its core, like business strategy really only gets applied in three industries or three career fields, management consulting, it's corporate development and venture capital. And so as a strategy consultant, right, like you've got a lot of that experience, that know-how, those frameworks that can be really valuable. The other thing is that as a management consultant, you're probably similar to me in that you're very intellectually curious. You love learning and learning quickly is a real skill that you've developed in your career. And that's incredibly valuable as a venture capitalist. It's one of the things that I love, but it's also one of those attributes that's super helpful because you're constantly meeting new companies, meeting new people, evaluating new business models, new technologies, and it forces you to get these learning curves incredibly quickly. And there is no plateau, right? Like today I've been doing venture capital for like 14 plus years. And every day I feel like I learned something, something super new and exciting, which is what I love about this industry. Lastly, a lot of consultants bring a lot of experience doing due diligence for private equity funds and venture funds already. So you kind of get the day to day in a lot of ways. And oftentimes you've got some real industry expertise, especially if you started, you know, honing in on different industries doing and different projects uh, during your time working and consulting. And that industry expertise and those connections can be incredibly valuable to those startups that you're potentially investing in and working with. All right, so let's talk about actually making the switch and breaking into venture capital. So venture capital, it's a really small industry. Honestly, not too dissimilar from management consulting in that there aren't a tremendous number of jobs out there, right? There, there's a stat out there that there's many jobs in venture capital as there are in professional sports. That said, especially if you're coming out of a top five consulting program, you really do have a step up. When I think about venture capital jobs, to me, if you look and you talk to a lot of the people that work in venture, you hear this commonality where they say, oh, I was just kind of at the right time, right place, whatever, right person. And I think that's really true. You really need to be kind of right place, right person, right time. And you know, optimizing for time can be really challenging because it's kind of outside of your control. But you can optimize for the other two, so being the right person and being at the right place. In terms of being the right person, doing management consulting is gonna set you up with a bunch of the skills you already need around business strategy and working with C-level clients and professionals. So you'll have that professionalism and, and that understanding where you need to maybe complement it is building out your financial modeling skill set because you're gonna spend as a VC, depending on where you invest, you're still gonna spend a decent amount of time digging into the numbers and analyzing you know, key metrics, building out forecasts, understanding valuation. And if you don't have that background already, getting it can be really helpful. Now, fortunately, there's a ton of courses, classes, and resources out there, but it's just something to be thoughtful about. The other thing is that you really wanna start expanding your network into more the entrepreneurial set. You've probably, as a management consultant, focus most of your network on large corporations. But now if you want to make the transition to VC, you need to kind of move 
uh, earlier stage to those startups and start going to events, meeting with entrepreneurs, talking to VCs, and start building those networks. Now, fortunately, again, if you come from a good background in terms of working at a, at a top tier management consulting firm, that alone is probably gonna open a lot of doors because people like talking to smart people and networking with them. So leverage that to, um, to your best advantage. Now let's talk about being at the right place. So for me, what that means is you are, you know and you are known by the right people so that when the opportunity arises, you're the one they think of. So how do you do that? Well, one, leverage recruiters. So you'd be surprised, like a lot of, a lot of firms will hire recruiters to go out and identify good talent. So identify who are the recruiters in the industry where you want to work. And by industry, I mean, you know, if you want to do life sciences, venture capital, find the recruiters that specialize in finding talent for that industry. If you want to do enterprise SaaS, there are recruiters for that. Network with them, get on their radar, and they'll tell you in many cases, they can tell you in many cases, hey, these are the firms that are currently hiring and help make you those connections. Maybe you want to work for a smaller firm and they're not going to necessarily hire a recruiter. They're going to tap into their own networks. So in that case, you want to actually network your way into those, those companies and those firms. I would recommend finding investors in the fund. That can be an incredible intro, warm intro, and also talking to companies in their portfolio and getting intros that way. Those can be really powerful because the venture capitalist respects their opinion to a very high degree, which lends their credibility to you uh, when they make that intro. All right, and then the last one, let's just talk about right time. Here's the punchline on right time. The right time for a venture fund is whenever they've got uh, excess cash to hire somebody. So that's gonna be when they just close a new fund, uh, right? Hopefully they raised a slightly larger fund than the one before, so they've got a little bit of extra cash that they can spend on hires, or somebody has left the firm. Oftentimes, if it, the timing's not quite right because neither of those things have happened, there might be other ways that you could leverage your way into getting your foot in the door. So one of those is like joining a scouts program where you are out there hunting for deals. And that's a way to get in front of them, start adding value to the relationship, even though it's off cycle. And then if you do a good job with that, you're sourcing lots of good stuff, and they, they see you as somebody that they enjoy working with, when they close their next fund or a new uh, opportunity arises, you can step into that role. So where do consultants really fail when it comes to venture capital? Well, from my perspective, they fail in two ways. They're really good at understanding strategy, they tend to be, you know, whether it's true or not, the perception is they're not as good on finance. And so if you really wanna work at like growth equity stage venture capital, you're gonna have a, a little bit of an uphill battle competing with uh, people coming out of investment banks because there's this perception that people out of investment banks have more experience and around finance. The other area where management consultants struggle a little bit, there's this like little bit of arrogance, frankly, around sales, right? And look, I get it. You did management consulting because you didn't want to go into sales, right? That's why a lot of people go into a whole bunch of careers that are not sales. But if you're being honest with yourself, the pinnacle of pretty much every profession is just sales. And in venture capital, that's really true if you want to drive a ton of value. Think about it, right? To be a great venture capitalist, you have to be able to fundraise, which means you have to be able to sell investors on your ability to invest their, bet their money better than they can. Two, you're selling entrepreneurs on why they should take your money versus somebody else's, especially if they have lots of options. And three, once you're doing your due diligence and building your investment case, you still have to sell your other partners on why it's a good investment. And being able to just walk in and hammer, you know, key points and matrices down everyone's throats isn't always the most effective way to get what you really want. And so really spending some time to hone and improve your sales ability can be a crucial skill that, that I think a lot of consultants uh, could really benefit from. So we've talked a lot about jumping into venture capital, but here's the one thing you need to keep in mind before you make the switch. One of the things that I think is important to consider 
is that making the transition to venture capital may require you to take a pay cut. So you gotta be prepared for that. In management consulting, you know, your you know, starting salaries are probably like 100 to 150K, somewhere in that range. At a venture fund, going from joining as like an analyst or associate, in some cases, the pay range ranges from like 80 to 130K. So you might actually have to take a pay cut. Now, there are larger funds that will pay even more up in the like two, 250 range, but it's just something you should be prepared for. The flip side is you don't have to travel as much. You don't have to work with, you know, big clients that don't care about you. The lifestyle is arguably a lot better as a venture capitalist and, and fewer hours generally. Not a lot fewer, but a little bit fewer. So there, there are some positive trade-offs. Plus the other thing is that if you do a good job, it can really set you up, especially if you can work your way into a partner track position. And that's where ultimately like the real money is made in venture capital is at the partner level. You know, maybe it's a short time, short term pay cut, but ultimately allows you to accelerate your, your career faster. Thanks for joining us today. I hope that was helpful. If you want to learn more about this stuff, check out my next video on how to break into venture capital.